What if I tell you that automating the entire Black and Scholes model is possible using Python to do the options valuation? Yes, that would be great. So yeah, guys, in this video, we are going to use Black and Scholes model uh, to do options pricing, also known as op options valuation using Python. Um, and we'll be using some simple functions. So yeah, it won't be difficult. And I hope you like the video. Hello financial programmers, I'm Ritwik Dashora and I'm back with a new video and some new learnings. In this we are going to do Black and Scholes uh, Python implementation and we'll also write some basic functions on option Greeks. And uh, so as, as I mentioned in the beginning, this video is going to be simple but to the point uh, for the new people who don't have any idea what is option. I'm not going into the, de uh, the definition of options. If you are unaware of this terminology, I humbly request you to uh, like to Google it first and then come back to this one because I am just going to use Black and Schulz model here. Uh, I'll just talk about, I would say briefly talk about Black and Schulz model. The Black and Schulz model is basically used for options pricing and uh, this is the formula of black and scholes uh, model i'm sorry for the low quality image but yeah this is what i got on google so yeah uh, we have some complicated formula for uh, for the valuation and for the options pricing for call and put option pricing and definitely i am not going to go into detail of how to derive this these formulas because there's no need of that uh, i'm just doing in this video is to convert the entire function the entire formula into python such that we automate this particular model right so uh, the c represents the, the value of the call option p represents the value of put option d1 and d2 are some variables that are actually used in uh, calculating c and p and uh, um, yeah so we are using some logarithm which is ln We're using square root of t and so on here so uh, what i'm going to do is to refer this particular formula and then convert it in, uh, into python but before that i would have to import some variables very useful libraries like numpy import numpy as np import scipy.stats as se numpy is used for ba basic mathematical uh, calculations um, and uh, scipy.stats is used for statistical calculations so we'll be using normal distribution functions which is cumulative density function probability density functions etc using this particular library so yeah i have written this uh, particular function for d1 so in this uh, case you can see d1 is basically log of s by k plus r plus sigma square by 2 into t and so on right so this is exactly what i've done uh, in order to use log i'm actually using np.log uh, which is a part of numpy library and then s by k plus r and then uh, here sigma is basically volatility and i have uh, the name of the, the 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 variable that i'm using here is vol and square divided by 2 multiplied by t which is time then volatility multiplied by square root of time right so this is d1 now i'll convert the formula for d2 as well into d1 and you can see like we have the entire formula and it can be actually reduced to this smaller formula which is d1 minus sigma into under root t so i'll be using the same to to make a function for d2 as well it's fairly simple you can see uh, d2 also uh, has variables of s k r vol and t and it's basically d1 minus volatility which is vol multiplied by square root of t again square root uh, has to be run through numpy library that's why i am actually using np.sqrt now the third step would be to convert this particular thing uh, which is the formula for c uh, into python again i'll make uh, a function so let me do that perfect you can see this uh, it's basically s multiplied by se.norm.cdf now what is this i'm actually using scipy.stats here to do some uh, statistical calculation here s is multiplied by uh, se.norm which is normal distribution dot cdf now what is cdf cdf is basically a cumulative density function here n of d1 is basically the normal distribution of d1 so i'm using this functionality and then d1 is exactly the same that we have made here minus k multiplied by e to the power minus rt which is here if you see on this one which is np dot exponential exp multiplied by sorry to uh, in brackets minus r multiplied by t and the segment which i'm actually using here uh, uh, the remaining segment is n of d2 again n will be converted into se.norm.cdf 
if as you can see here and then d2 is exactly the function that we have made here now we can actually convert this particular formula for p as well into python so i've written the function of put value as well but yeah before going to detail if you're not writing this code with me it's absolutely fine i share my google drive access where i i keep all my codes including this one um over there there are many more codes uh, uh, such as my trading bot uh, and some of the analysis that i have done in the past everything is over uh, in the in the google drive and how to get an access of my google drive what you need to do is basically just go to my channel and just follow some basic uh, steps it costs literally very very small amount of money uh, to get the entire access of my google drive which has a lot of code so you just need to follow some steps over there and then you'll get the access uh, and yeah i make sure i'll make sure that this code is also present on that google drive and not only this one i will actually do some real time implementation as well and will keep the code in the google drive as well so yeah please check it out i'll come back to the the, the put value as i have mentioned here i'm using the variables uh, s k r vol and t and the entire formula is converted into uh, the the python function where k is multiplied with se dot norm dot cdf because it's n of minus d2 and you can see minus d2 is here uh, the remaining thing is e to the power minus rt which is np dot exp which is exponential to the power of minus r and multiply by t which is put into parenthesis right and then minus s multiply by n to the power uh, sorry n of minus d1 in this case uh, s is multiplied with se dot norm norm dot cdf as i mentioned which is cumulative dens density function and then uh, it's uh, it has in the bracket it has minus d1 d1 has all the parameters that we have mentioned over here so i'll just uh, run this code uh, as well now let's see what is the value of d1 considering these value s is equal to 50 k is strike price which is 45 uh, d which is risk free rate is 0 0.04 which is 4 percent volatility is 30 percent which is 0.3 and t which is time is 0.75 so if i run this d1 is this one but there's no significance of d1 because this d1 is just a, a parameter that we are using uh, inside the formula to calculate call value and put value but still let's see what is d1 and d2 now let's see what is the value of call well right if i just hit run so the value of the call is fifth so is 8.6434 uh in this case so yeah this is the intrinsic value of the call if uh, the price of call option real time call option is trading above the price that is mentioned here and as per this model uh, that call premium the call price is overvalued and it may come down very soon if the price is trading lower than 8.64 then it will come up it is undervalued so yeah as per this model it might be wrong because this is another like just a model which uh, might differ from the uh real time uh, market conditions and I, I highly recommend you guys to do some further research and like not use my my code directly to to trade your real time money so I'm, I'll just like this is just this is an educational video and we'll stick to that motive only so the put value is if I run this uh, uh, function I got 2.31 now the value why the value of put option is higher sorry call option is higher than the value of put option because in this case strike price is lower than the price uh, is lower than s uh, so yeah it's in the money and in the in the case of put it's out of the money because it's trading much far from the strike price in the opposite direction so that's why the value of put is less than the value of call in this case but in the real world it may actually be very very uh, significantly different and significantly higher or lower than this value so for your reference i've just written some of the uh, uh, of these functions for options greeks right which are actually used in the analysis as well so uh, you can just pause this video and can note all these functions i'm not going to go into detail because it doesn't make sense to put a lot of time into this because, because like all of them mostly very straightforward but yeah before that let's just go to the investopedia and let's just learn basic things about these option greeks um delta is uh, the sensitivity of the options price with respect to the underlying assets price uh, gamma is um the the sensitivity of options delta with respect to underlying asset price you can see this right so it's like a double differential of uh, of the of the price of option and and the price of underlying and delta is just the one degree differential right theta is um, the sensitivity of options price with respect to time vega is is the sensitivity with respect to volatility and rho is the uh, sensitivity uh, with respect to interest rates right and these are uh, these uh, greeks are actually used for some detailed analysis and definitely it takes a lot of time to do all these things manually so i've written all the functions that you can use directly call delta is basically this particular uh, function call gamma call vega call theta and call rho so these are the greeks for call these are the 
Greeks for put. So what you need to do here is basically just run these uh, cells. And for example, if you are interested in put theta, I'll just put it here. And let's see uh, the, the value of put theta for the same variables that we use in the past. So this is the put theta is negative 0.25. If I do it for call, sorry, I just made an error. Yeah, it's negative 0.389. Uh, if like, for example, delta is very important. So let me just write call delta is 0.74 and put delta is negative 0.25 why why put delta is negative uh, if you are finance graduate then you would know that uh, the delta that the reason for the delta of put to be negative and the reason for de uh, the delta of call to be positive i'm not going to detail of these financial concepts but yeah this is how we can actually make these simple functions to automate the entire option greeks and the black and Scholes model i have also uh, mentioned some of the links in the description box uh, which are some of uh, the libraries that i found online for doing this entire analysis uh, directly but I highly recommend to write your own uh, uh, functions because you can see it's very fairly simple you don't need to rely on uh, a third party library but yeah still if you're interested you can use this one which is pi black shoals analytics I have put it in the description box the uh, the documentation is fairly simple the second one is obstrat you can install it by just doing pip install obstrat and over there you can also see some visualization of the call input options very very good library for Visual, visualizations of call and put and the third one is volib again yeah you can use the black shoals package here now the good thing here for volib is that um, you can also refer to some of the different models similar and different models for example just black package black shoals package and there's another one which is black shoals merton package which uh, are different by some small like some there are some basic differences i have mentioned about the black and shoals you can also refer to the black shoals merton model so yeah if in order to uh, refer the black and shoals you can just click on this one and then you'll see the entire documentation for this uh, particular uh, library if you want me to cover these libraries in detail just mention in the comment box and if uh, i get significant comments then definitely i'll consider making some i would say sep separate videos for these libraries as well because there are many more things which are possible in through these libraries apart from the basic uh, options pricing if you want to learn more about uh, financial programming or these concepts uh, you would be very much interested to get in touch directly with me and to in order to uh, do that just join my patreon exclusive community where i am in like i i'm in touch with all the patreon members uh, and these people share their personal projects with me and i provide my knowledge so that their projects can be improved if you are interested in something like that then you should check out my patreon community exclusive community as well if you're still watching this video guys i deserve one like button just i'm not asking for a lot of things just click on that like button and also subscribe a uh, red button that is mentioned in the down section down below it won't take a lot of time but this is very very important for the youtube algorithm and it is a big motivation for people like me to keep on going um so yeah thank you so much guys for watching this video till the end you can click here to subscribe to my youtube channel and over there you'll find the entire playlist of how to extract indian stocks data using some free APIs and over there you'll see how to use Talib library to do technical analysis on the data that we extract from these free APIs. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, peace. Oh.